Ancient civilizations developed technologies that would make you question everything you ever thought you knew about history. We are about to discover some of the most astonishing ancient inventions that defy what we thought was possible. Would you believe it if we told you that the ancient Chinese had the ability to detect earthquakes? Or have you ever heard of the Baghdad battery, capable of producing electricity? Seems unbelievable, right? Join us for a look at 10 ancient technologies that shouldn't have existed in prehistoric times and learn about other baffling ancient inventions. Number 10. The Greek Fire Greek fire, the mysterious incendiary weapon of the Byzantine Empire, is a remarkable ancient technology that still baffles us today. This deadly weapon, dating back to the 7th century, was a well-guarded secret, and its specific recipe remains a mystery. Greek fire, also known as sea fire and liquid fire, was invented by the Byzantines to resist their foes, particularly at sea. This fatal combination was heated, pressurized, and administered through a siphon tube. What distinguished Greek fire was its capacity to burn on water, making it practically unstoppable in naval engagements. Worse, it adhered to whatever it touched, whether ships or human flesh, and could only be extinguished by a strange mixture of vinegar, sand, and old urine. The inventor of Greek fire, known as Kalinikos of Heliopolis, was a Jewish architect who fled Syria to Constantinople to avoid arrest by Arabs. He experimented with numerous materials until he discovered the ideal combination for this incendiary weapon. Once the Byzantine authorities had obtained all of the required components, they devised a siphon to drive the flammable mixture toward opposing ships. Greek fire was not only deadly, but also frightful, emitting a roaring noise and large amounts of smoke resembling a dragon's breath. The formula for Greek fire was highly guarded due to its extraordinary potency, known only to the Kalinikos family and Byzantine emperors and passed down through centuries. Even when seized, opponents were unable to recreate the technology, resulting in the loss of the secret recipe. During the first and second Arab sieges, Greek fire played a critical part in defending Constantinople against Arab sieges, repelling enemy fleets, and causing significant damage to the Arab navy. For ages, the Byzantine Empire used this strong weapon in confrontations with foreigners as well as civil strife. Some historians claim that the importance of Greek fire in protecting the Byzantine Empire ultimately saved Western civilization from overwhelming invasion. Aside from naval applications, the Byzantines used Greek fire in a variety of different ways, including a handheld version resembling a flamethrower known as the Charosophon. This weapon was employed both defensively and offensively in sieges, as well as to disturb enemy armies on land. In addition, the Byzantines filled clay jars with Greek fire, thereby transforming them into antique explosives. Many people sought to reproduce the Greek fire formula over the years, with Arabs employing their version during the Seventh Crusade. While sulfur, pine resin, and petrol have all been proposed as constituents, the exact formula remains a mystery. Quick lime is suspected because it ignites in water, although the specific composition is unknown. This ancient technology has enthralled historians and scientists. Hence, Greek fire is an astounding technology that continues to baffle our comprehension of the early times. Number 9. The Earthquake Detector Nearly 2,000 years ago, the ancient Chinese possessed a wonderful device that should not have existed in primitive times, the seismic detector. This astonishing discovery, attributed to the genius Chinese inventor Zhang Heng during the Han Dynasty, pushed our grasp of history and science to new heights. Zhang Heng, a polymath of his day, contributed significantly to subjects such as astronomy, mathematics, engineering, and others. His most remarkable invention, however, was the world's first seismic detector, which he introduced around 132 AD. The gadget was a massive bronze jar with eight dragons positioned around its perimeter, each holding a bronze ball. Eight bronze toads awaited the balls beneath these monsters. The inner workings of Zhang Heng's seismoscope are unknown. However, it is thought to have had a pendulum with lever gears linked to the dragons. When an earthquake struck, the pendulum would swing back and forth, triggering one of the dragon mechanisms according to the direction of the shocks. This innovative system not only detected earthquakes, but also determined their direction, which is important information for offering relief. 
Zhang Heng's creation was met with skepticism at first, but it proved its effectiveness in 138 AD when a bronze ball fell after an earthquake hundreds of miles away from the capital, Luoyang. Even though Zhang Heng believed earthquakes were produced by winds and changes in air pressure long before the notion of tectonic plates appeared, the apparatus was a monument to his grasp of seismic activity. Surprisingly, scientists in Zhengzhou, China, were able to reproduce Zhang's seismoscope in 2005. They used it to identify simulated earthquakes based on genuine seismic waves from various earthquakes in China and Vietnam, and it detected them all, demonstrating the device's functioning. Even by modern standards, Zheng Heng's seismoscope is an antique technological marvel. While current seismographs work on similar principles to Zhang Heng's creation, the Chinese scholar's feat remains a tribute to the inventiveness and scientific understanding of past civilizations. Number 8. The Baghdad Battery the Baghdad Battery, also known as the Wilhelm Koenig Battery, is one of the most intriguing puzzles in the field of ancient technology. This unusual artifact consists of a small clay jar, a copper cylinder, and an iron rod. While its precise purpose is unknown, its cryptic nature has sparked passionate debate among archaeologists and historians. Wilhelm Koenig, the man credited with the discovery, claimed that the assemblage was an ancient Parthian battery that predated any other known examples by centuries. This hypothesis, however, has encountered significant resistance within the academic world, with many discarding it as discredited. The Baghdad battery is essentially a nested trio of items. The clay pot, though incomplete when discovered, would have been taller if its top had been cemented with asphalt. The copper cylinder was housed within this jar, and the iron rod protruded through the jar's stopper. The function of this tiered pattern has sparked conjecture. Wilhelm Koenig's discovery is clouded in mystery, as he offered little specifics about when, where, and how he discovered the battery. It is widely assumed to have been discovered in the ancient city of Kujut Rabu near Baghdad, with some versions pointing to 1936 and others to 1938 in the basement of Iraq's National Museum. The artifact's proximity to Ctesiphon, which served as the capital of the Parthian and Sasanian Iranian empires, has sparked controversy about its age. Koenig hypothesized a Parthian origin, with dates ranging from 150 BC to 223 AD. Recent archaeological studies, however, have relocated its origins to the Sasanian period, which lasted from 224 to 650 AD. The central mystery surrounding the Baghdad battery is whether it actually functioned as a battery cell. Koenig's theory lacked clear historical proof, but he had recognized that the artifact included two metals with different electrical potentials, a key component of batteries. The occurrence of corrosion on the artifact suggested that an ionic solution, similar to an electrolyte, could have been present in the jar. Corrosion tests revealed chemicals such as vinegar or wine, implying that they might indeed conduct electricity when coupled with an electrolyte. Despite this, the artifact's low voltage output, about one volt, casts doubt on its usefulness as a power source. Ideas suggest that the Baghdad battery was utilized for a variety of purposes, including embedding it into idol sculptures to produce buzzing effects during religious rites. Some even believe it was used in electroplating to gild metals, an idea Koenig himself supported. However, the exact function of the Baghdad battery remains a mystery. While the idea of an old battery is intriguing, the lack of conclusive historical proof and the artifact's restricted capabilities feed arguments regarding its real function. Number 7. The Stonehenge Stonehenge, one of the world's most recognizable prehistoric monuments, is located on Salisbury Plain in southern England and dates back between 4,000 and 5,000 years. Stonehenge's builders brought gigantic stones known as sarsens from Marlborough Downs, 20 miles north, each weighing roughly 25 tons. Smaller stones known as blue stones, weighing between two and five tons and acquired from quarries in Wales' Preseli Hills were also hauled 140 kilometers to the site. The actual mechanism of transporting these massive stones over such great distances is still unknown. It seems almost impossible to drag such huge stones to the site without the help of modern technology. It is also unbelievable to imagine how the stones would have been assembled on top of each other. 
Stonehenge is part of a broader spiritual landscape that includes other stone and wooden buildings, as well as burial sites. The region has a rich history that dates back over 10,000 years to when hunter-gatherers dominated the land. Some of the ancient trenches excavated around Stonehenge were used for hunting, while others may have served a ritual purpose. The construction of Stonehenge took place in stages, beginning in approximately 3000 BC. A circular trench surrounded the site, and 56 holes, or Aubrey holes, were dug, possibly for timber posts or bluestones. At this time, the heel stone, a sarsen stone outside the entryway, could have been put. The blue stone's transportation remains a mystery, while investigations suggest they may have been transported on wooden trackways lubricated with pig lard. Sarsen stones were set in a horseshoe pattern around 2500 BC, with lintels joining them and an altar stone in the center. Between the Sarsen horseshoe and the outer Sarsen circle, blue stone rings were inserted. Outside of Stonehenge, four station stones were also built. Around 200 years later, the blue stones were moved, an avenue was built connecting Stonehenge to the River Avon, and other changes were made. Stonehenge's builders most likely resided nearby, as indicated by discoveries at Durrington Walls, a nearby Neolithic hamlet. Their food, which was high in meat and dairy, implies that they were not slaves but rather a society with common aims. Despite this, the political organization of the time remains unknown due to the lack of written documents in Britain at the time. Despite popular belief, the Druids, who appeared much later, did not build Stonehenge. The Druids predate the monument by thousands of years, and there is no historical evidence connecting them to Stonehenge or stone circles. Stonehenge's ultimate meaning, however, remains a mystery. Numerous explanations have been postulated, including unification, solar calendar, burial ground, pilgrimage site, or a combination of these functions. It could have represented the unification of Britain's different cultures, or it could have acted as an old solar calendar. The discovery of human remains suggests it may have been a burial ground, but Stonehenge's cryptic aspect continues to enchant, concealing its ultimate purpose in mystery. Number 6. The Hypocaust Heating System one extraordinary innovation stands out in the annals of ancient technology, and this is the heat storage hypocaust, a complex heating system that defies our preconceptions of prehistoric capabilities. Often attributed to the Romans, who invented the hypocaust, this technology evolved over ages into a complex method of keeping rooms warm for days with a single blaze. The Roman hypocausts were innovative heating devices that transported heat from a subterranean fire into underground chambers. Similar to modern-day radiant floor heating systems, this heat was absorbed by the floor and then radiated into the room above. Underfloor flue passageways made by small pillars supporting the floor's paving slabs were devised by the Romans for these systems. The heat was even directed through wall cavities warming the walls. However, the story does not finish with the Romans. Contrary to popular opinion, hypocausts lasted throughout Europe after the fall of the Roman Empire. These heating systems thrived, particularly in monasteries during the early Middle Ages. The Eastern Romans, also known as the Byzantine Empire, preserved the custom and the Arabs reintroduced the hypocaust to Western Europe in the 13th century when they built the Alhambra Palace. In smaller buildings, streamlined hypocausts with ducts rather than pillars were used. While just heating a portion of the floor, these systems were easier to build and nevertheless very effective. Surprisingly, some of these hypocausts, such as the one discovered in a rural Spanish community, are still in use today. The genuine breakthrough, however, was the heat storage hypocaust. This brilliant innovation saw the practice of stacking granite stones on top of the furnace vault to collect heat. This advancement enabled rooms to be heated without the use of a constantly burning fire. Unlike the Roman hypocaust, which used radiant heating, the heat storage hypocaust used convection heating. The heated area had a perforated hot plate above the pile of granite stones. Perforations remained closed during the fire process to keep smoke out of the room, allowing it to exit through a chimney or wall hollow. After the furnace was cleaned and the fire was out, the vents in the hot plate opened, allowing hot air from the heated stone pile to enter the room. 
the heat storage hypocost dominated until the appearance of glazed tile stoves in the 15th century. These tile stoves were more efficient and adaptable for heating areas, ushering in the end of the heat storage hypocost period. Nonetheless, the legacy of this ancient heating system lives on, shining light on our forefathers' brilliance in developing advanced technologies that continue to astonish us today. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. An astonishing discovery was made in an ancient temple in India, hollowed out walls containing water pipes. These pipes are shown in the image and are believed to be used to move certain movable parts of idols secretly through steam and hot water in order to fool people into believing certain superstitions. This brought significance and power to the religious leaders, as masses believed the religious leaders possessed divine powers. Who knows how many other myths could also have simple physics behind them that the clever people of ancient times had mastered? Let us know more about such ancient technologies in the comments. Number 5. Piri Reis Map In 1513, Turkish Admiral Piri Reis drew a stunning map known as the Map of America. This map, discovered in Turkey's Topkapi Palace Museum in 1929, is an important historical artifact, having been created only 21 years after Christopher Columbus's expedition to the New World. Piri Reis, who was born in Gallipoli, had a famous naval career that included fights in the Red Sea and Indian Ocean against the Portuguese. What distinguishes Piri Reis's map is that he built it from many sources rather than relying on personal journey experience. He used 20 regional maps, an Arab map of India, four Portuguese maps of India and China, and a lost map by Christopher Columbus. This latter point is very intriguing since it implies that Piri Reis's map contains information about Columbus's work, which was submitted to Spain in 1498, but had been lost for years. Despite his achievements, we know little about Piri Reis's life beyond his naval career and the development of his map, as well as his publication of Kitabi Bahiria, the Book of Sea Lore, a manual of sailing directions. He created a second global map in 1528, but only a portion of it survived. This map depicts the Atlantic, the New World from Venezuela to Newfoundland, and the southern tip of Greenland. His map is a vital historical document. What distinguishes the Piri Reis map and ignites disagreement is its depiction of Antarctica, which appears to be 300 years before its official discovery. Professor Charles Hapgood's 1965 ideas, which stated that the map's use of Mercator's projection and the presence of pre-ice Antarctica implied access to high technology predating recognized civilizations, added to the mystery. This hypothesis even suggested the existence of an Atlantean or alien civilization. However, no concrete proof has been shown to back up these allegations. Skeptics have pointed out that the map could show the South American shoreline rather than Antarctica, implying that Argentina did not exist at the time, and that Antarctica and South America were formerly linked. Nonetheless, more aberrant maps resembling the Piri Race map have been discovered, raising issues about their origins and the possibility of a primitive culture with extraordinary navigational ability. Hence, the Piri Rice map continues to elicit discussion regarding its true meaning and the mysteries it conceals. Whether it proves the existence of an undiscovered culture or not, this old artifact calls into question our understanding of history and archaic technology. Number 4. The Nimrud Lens for nearly a century, scientists and historians have been fascinated by the Nimrud Lens, a 3,000-year-old piece of rock crystal unearthed at the Assyrian capital of Nimrud in modern-day Iraq. This lens, also known as the Layered Lens, dates back to around 750 to 710 BC and is composed of natural rock crystal. It has remarkable optical qualities. The Nimrud Lens, which has a somewhat oval form, was roughly ground, most likely on a lapidary wheel, and has a focus point around 11 centimeters from the flat side, with a focal length of about 12 centimeters. These measurements imply that it might function as a three times magnifying glass and reach even greater magnification when paired with another lens. During grinding, 12 cavities on the lens surface were produced, possibly storing naphtha or similar fluid, indicating its potential as a tool to focus sunlight, albeit poorly. The Nimrud lens's original purpose has caused considerable controversy. 
Some suggested applications include a magnifying glass for fine engravings and a burning glass for starting fires by concentrating sunlight. One theory proposed by Italian scholar Giovanni Pettinato is that the Nimrud lens was part of an ancient Assyrian telescope. While popular history credits Hans Lipper Shea with inventing the telescope in 1608 AD, Pettinato contended that the ancients were aware of telescopic principles. Similar lenses have been discovered in artifacts from ancient Egypt and Knossos dating back thousands of years. Pettinato claimed that the Assyrians' understanding of celestial objects, such as Saturn as a serpent-encircled god, could only be explained by the use of a telescope. This notion, however, is greeted with skepticism because there is no clear evidence of telescopes in Assyrian astronomical records. Various examples of ancient lenses, such as the Nimrud lens, have been discovered around the world, giving light to past civilizations' advanced grasp of optics. Despite ongoing disagreements over its specific purpose, the Nimrud lens endures as a testimony to prehistorical technological feats. Number 3. The Iron Pillar of Delhi The Iron Pillar of Delhi is in the middle of the Kutba complex in Delhi, India, and has perplexed scientists and historians for centuries. Despite being over a thousand years old, this amazing piece of ancient technology defies the odds by remaining rust-free. This magnificent pillar stands at 7.2 meters in height, with 1.1 meter buried underground, and has a lower diameter of 17 inches and an upper diameter of 12 inches, weighing more than 6 tons. Although the pillar is adorned with various inscriptions, the oldest is a six-line Sanskrit poem inscription. Scholars believe that this remarkable artifact was created during the reign of Chandragupta to Vikramaditya, a Gupta king. However, the pillar's journey to its current place in Delhi is still a source of academic controversy. According to one version, this extraordinary pillar was originally positioned elsewhere before being relocated to the main temple in the fortress city of Lal Khat during the reign of the Tomar king, Anangapala II. However, the pillar's history changed in 1191 AD when Prithviraj Chauhan, Ananga Palatu's grandson, was defeated by Qutb ud Din Aibak, the slave army leader of Muhammad Ghori of Ghazni. Following the fall of Lalkot to the invading Muslim forces, the Kuwat ul Islam Mosque was built on the site. The mosque was built on top of a temple, but it was not the same one where the iron pillar once stood. According to archaeological findings and temple architecture, the pillar was transported from the Tomar Temple to its current location within the Kutba complex. What actually distinguishes the Iron Pillar of Delhi is its incredible corrosion resistance. Several ideas have evolved to explain this riddle, with two major categories, material variables, which are preferred by Indian investigators, and environmental factors, which are preferred by foreign researchers. One popular theory, known as the Mixed Potential Theory, contends that there is a link between the iron utilized in the pillar's processing, structure, and qualities. Scientific investigation has revealed that these variables interact to form a passive layer of rust on the surface of the Iron Pillar of Delhi. This layer resists further corrosion, leaving the pillar seemingly rust-free for millennia. Surprisingly, this corrosion resistance is not limited to the Iron Pillar of Delhi. This unusual quality has been discovered in several key ancient Indian iron items, according to research. Iron pillars discovered in Dar, Mandu, Mount Abu, and Kodachadri Hill, as well as ancient iron cannons, are examples. These findings show that ancient Indian iron workers possessed remarkable metallurgical expertise, allowing them to create such rust-resistant marvels. According to common belief, standing with one's back to the pillar and making one's hands connect behind it brings good luck. Unfortunately, this practice mistakenly destroyed the protective rust layer over time, resulting in apparent wear and discoloration on the pillar's lower half. It would be a tragedy if monuments showcasing human genius were to be destroyed not by the ravages of time, but by the activities of humanity itself. Number 2. The Ancient Refrigerators a fascinating device evolved in the heart of ancient Persia, going back to 400 BC, that defies our concept of prehistoric capabilities. Yakchal, the ancient refrigerators of the desert, these cleverly made towers were crucial in keeping food and ice in hot temperatures, and they were an important component of Persian culture and society. 
Yakchal, which translates as ice pit, was crucial in storing ice for usage during the scorching summer months, as well as keeping food in the barren Iranian desert. Above ground mud brick domes, some standing up to 60 feet tall, concealed immense underground rooms, often reaching 5,000 cubic meters, with deep storage chambers. These storage areas also had access to kanats, a system of underground irrigation channels and wind catchers, which could cool the inside to freezing levels even on hot summer days. The Yakchal's ability to retain cold temperatures throughout the summer is quite astounding, thanks to its unique structure. The massive mud-brick walls of the Yakchal were created with a peculiar mortar called Saruj, which was made of sand, clay, egg whites, lime, goat hair, and ash. This mixture was not only resistant to heat transfer, but also fully impenetrable to water, preserving the ice and food inside. The Yakchal used an evaporative cooling system, relying on wind catchers and water channeled through kanats from surrounding springs. Wind catchers, which are tall constructions with huge holes, caught and channeled the wind into the Yakchal. The water from the kanats was stored in the Yakchal, where it evaporated and provided cooling. Despite its crude appearance, this system was astonishingly efficient, keeping temperatures inside at or below freezing for extended periods of time. The Yakchal was extremely important in ancient Persian society. It was not only utilized to preserve food, but it was also used to make ice, a valuable commodity used for both medicinal and culinary purposes. These constructions were not only practical, but also ornamented with elaborate geometric shapes that served as symbols of Persian engineering and craftsmanship. Despite the fact that many Yakchal structures have fallen into disrepair or have been lost over time, there is a growing interest in their preservation and research. Modern applications for the Yakchal's cooling system are being investigated, particularly in areas where electricity or modern refrigeration equipment are unavailable. Researchers hope to build sustainable, low-cost cooling solutions for communities around the world by diving into the mysteries of the Yakchal. Hence, the Yakchal is a monument to old technology's genius, defying our preconceptions of primitive capabilities. Its ability to keep ice and food in a hostile desert environment, as well as its cultural and architectural value, makes it an important source of knowledge and inspiration for modern society. Number 1. Automated Gates of Greeks Ancient Greece, well known for its contributions to philosophy, art, and culture, also housed an unexpected technological marvel, automated doors. Heron of Alexandria, a renowned mathematician and engineer, invented this astounding invention. Heron's hydraulic system was designed to open and seal temple doors without human involvement, defying prehistorical technology assumptions. Fires were lit at the altars in ancient Greek temples as part of religious rites. Heron's invention was based on an ingenious system that included a brass pot suspended behind the fire that was partially filled with water. This brass pot was linked to several weight-bearing containers via a pulley system. When the fire was lit, the air inside the brass pot expanded, forcing the water into these containers which fell, drawing the pulley ropes and thereby opening the doors. As devotees came to the temple, the doors swung open once a day, generating a sense of mystery and divine might. The system, despite taking several hours from the first lighting of the fire to the opening of the doors, added to the temple's spiritual aura. This innovative system, along with other pneumatic and hydraulic discoveries, was chronicled by Heron in his work Pneumatica. Heron, interestingly, advised that he would install a similar automatic door system at Alexandria's city gates. When Heron introduced these mechanized doors in the first century, Alexandria had been subsumed into the expanding Roman Empire. Its Greek culture and inhabitants, on the other hand, remained substantially unaltered, with Greek temples still being built, and individuals allowed to practice their old Greek beliefs alongside new temples dedicated to Greek gods. It is important to mention that current automatic doors, which are powered by electricity and are activated by sensors, were not invented until 1931. Heron of Alexandria, a Greek-Egyptian mathematician and inventor, was fascinated with applied mathematics and the practical use of numbers in everyday life. In addition to the automated doors, he built a steam-powered engine, wind wheel, vending machine, and even the pantograph, demonstrating his wide abilities. 
Heron's automatic temple doors, known as Number 37 in his writings, worked on the premise that they should open automatically when a fire was kindled and close automatically when the fire was out. Heat would be generated by igniting a fire above ground on an altar, creating pressure in a sealed vessel beneath the temple. The liquid inside this vessel, which could be water or perhaps quicksilver, would be pumped by a hose into another vessel suspended from the ceiling and attached to the temple door's buried doorposts. As the second jar filled with liquid, it exerted downward strain on the ropes linked to the doorposts, appearing to open magically. When the fire went out and the heat went down, the liquid was sucked back into the original vessel. The lighter second vessel would allow the counterbalance to pull in the other way, closing the doors. While automatic doors may appear to be ordinary now, they were invented, or rather reinvented, by the brilliant Heron of Alexandria, who lived in an era far removed from our modern amenities. This astonishing creation shows how humans were always in search of practical answers to everyday problems. Thanks for watching. See you very soon.